This is my Mac station. And over yonder out of camera reach is my PC station with my six monitors that I do all my data work on. Right. This is my fun station. So yeah, Peter, this is your... I, I, I equate you to fun. Welcome to a new episode of How to Navigate the 2020 Shit Show. I'm your host, Peter Clayton. What are you going to do if you've attracted most of your prospects, leads, and new business opportunities participating in trade shows, conferences, and events? Stay tuned because today we're going to catch up with one of my very favorite data geeks and actually favorite people, Donato DiOrio, the founder and CEO of Data Z. Donato is a consultant, advisor, problem solver, speaker, storyteller, and teacher. He's founded, grown, and led companies in technology, data, and recruitment, including the founder and CEO of Broadlook Technologies, which was acquired by Ringlead in 2015. So I wanted to talk to you, Donato, because I wanted to learn more about your new company, Data Z. You are what I would call a serial entrepreneur. You've started a lot of different companies and had some very successful runs and you know acquisitions of past companies. So tell us a little bit about Data Z and, and the inspiration of behind starting this company. Sure. So uh, you know, af after you know, after Brawl got acquired and uh, I was with Ringlead for a while and then, then I left, you know, I, I'm forever interested in, in deep dives of technology, uh, you know, picking an area and really just, uh, you end up dominating it because you spent so much focus on an expertise on diving deep into an area. And I felt that there was a lot more to be done in the data quality arena. So the first two years of data Z, you know, it's like A to Z, but data Z, <laughs> uh, hopefully, I, I don't have to explain that. <laughs> but, let's hope not. Uh, yeah, let's hope not. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I need. You know, I was thinking about the logo, making up, making like the little, the little Amazon kind of right. like thing on there. But oh well. Of the, course, in Europe, you'd be Data Z. Data Z, yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> but nobody get it. <laughs> so, so the first two years of Data Z, what I did was I, I, I didn't want to. You can't just dive in and build technology in a, in, a, in, in a short amount of time. So I used my uh, consultative expertise, and I work with large companies and help them with their data. And many times I brought in uh, five different vendors, right? It, 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 so I, I, was, I very much studied what was out there, what was good, what, what worked from market automation to CRM to data cleansing. And then every once in a while, there'd be a gap. Uh, and nobody else solved the gap for the client. So I'm like, I could build some custom technology there. So what I would do is I'd have a large enough project that the development of some custom technology could, could be covered by the consulting engagement. So over, you know, from, from 98 through 2000, I basically kept looking for, I, I turned down a lot of projects that were just like, I can make money, but it's just boring, right? Same exact, go out and buy a list. You can call my list vendor buddies and clean it up and deliver it. But I looked for problems that other people didn't want. So fast forward to today, uh, Data Z now sells a data station and it's a Microsoft Azure virtual machine that has about 80 different data building and cleansing applications on it. And I don't, and unlike a uh, past company like a Ringlead or a Broadlook, I don't sell directly to the consumer. I sell to people who are, who are thus supporting 10, 12, 15, 20, 50 clients. So uh, the, the technology could be from, you know, getting data off LinkedIn, building a market analysis, cleansing data. Uh, cleansing is one of the strong points that I've, I've built out. So, you know, other, other data vendors might have 50 different things they clean the data on. Uh, I dove into machine learning, kind of rein, reinvented myself uh, enough to, I don't do the development anymore, but enough to manage the people that I found to do the work that I envisioned. So we built a machine learning technology that analyzes CRM data. So I get 
sometimes I'll do a free, a free cleanse for a client just to get their data, to get a sample. And, and it's not like I get email addresses or, or uh, personalized, non-anonymized stuff. It just I want all the company names and I want to see how ugly all the company names are and all the titles and stuff. So I built up 200 million samples of this data and then we unleash our machine learning on each record. It goes out, it crawls the web and says, hey, does this look like something that's correct that's used commonly in context across the web? If not, then it's flagged as, hey, potential error. Then it goes to human review. I've got a team in India that goes through and uh, verifies if it is and should be a rule. And it could be a spelling error. It could be something that's abbreviated that shouldn't be. But when somebody gets data cleanse, invariably they complain. And since I've been doing this, I've got no complaints. I've got like, uh, I didn't realize that our data was this bad. And now I have 1.5 million rules that our application will pick up and say, here's what needs to be corrected. So I run it as a service uh, for some clients where I'll do the work myself, but mainly I sell my data station to others. It's not cheap. And then they manage maybe, uh, you know, they might be making a hundred grand a month off my data station and I charge three for, for, for a month for, for, the, for the access. And I, I, it's on a year subscription. So CRM vendors, applicant tracking vendors, anybody that is moving data into their system, they need to clean it up. They're doing it in mass and they don't have the expertise. This makes them uh, with a fairly competent person and my tools superior to anything else that's out there that they could buy as a service. Long so, explanation. Uh, yeah, but a, a, I think an, an important explanation, you know, one of the, the things I, I found on your LinkedIn profile is uh, a data decay update okay. that you put out in July, 2020. Um, and, and a new one's coming out. So, so I'll, I'll do one that will, that I'm still collecting the data that ended in October. So I'm going to be doing the, the data decay report every three months. So why is this important, and especially now? Well, typically, and I've been tracking this for years, uh, I would see when you get somebody's data and you go through a real-time cleanse, meaning you've actually got people verifying the data, we could see that data would decay 3 to 5% a month. And when I mean the data decay, uh, an email, a phone number, uh, company names don't change that often. Uh, factoid I learned years ago. A website will outlive a company, right? So even PeopleSoft was a great example. I kept, it was there like eight years after Oracle acquired them, you could find the PeopleSoft website, even though it was, the company name was then Oracle. So acquisitions, data changes, uh, cell phones change, exchanges change. Sometimes your phone number changes because they split an area code and you're given a new phone number, even if you've had, you've had the phone number for, 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 for many years or, or you're, you, you need a new phone number for your company and you can't get one in the old area code. So data decay is three to five percent a month. Right now, eight to 12% a month because of the layoffs and furloughs and everything else that's happened with the economy being in, I'm not gonna say economies, it's in upheaval, right? Because there's opportunities in many places. Uh, it's definitely an upheaval, but that means data, data is changing. So therefore, data, if you own the data, it's decaying if you need it. Yes, the data is out there and in it, 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 it itself, it's correct. But if it's your data, it's your CRM, your, your recruiting system, your resume base, 8% a month to 12% a month right now. That, and that's pretty substantial. It's good for me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. It's good for you. Absolutely. And any, da any, any data vendor. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, and I think one of the reasons that lists have become so important is nobody's got a trade show booth today. Nobody is able to go out into an Unleash event and put up a booth and stand there and talk to prospects and get updated information because there ain't any of that stuff going on. So to me, um, your lists and data generation of current and accurate lists has become even more important because how are you going to reach out to 
prospective clients and customers um, if your if your list is garbage. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it does. It, my you, we mentioned my 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 uh, <laughs> laws of, laws of list generation. Uh, you know, and the first one is planning. The most people just have no no scientific understanding even the vps of marketing they're they're look they're not in the trenches uh, the data should be acquired as it's needed going out and buying a list is a poor idea because you'll buy the list and maybe you get the 10% of the list the first month uh what happens then month 2 it's 8% and then it's 12% and 15% it, it decays very quickly so Data needs to be a third tier. You've got sales, you've got marketing. Data is its own thing, and it should be seen that way. I, I believe that's where we're going to go as people realize the, the importance of the data. And you hear a lot, but they're regurgitating, and they don't know why it's important, right? Uh, you, <laughs> you, you hear so much you know, from, you know, I, I know so much about data. I know what I don't know. <laughs> you know, you see the real experts realize how much they don't know. And I hear these people out there that are self-proclaimed data gurus. Uh, and I'm like, oh my goodness. They, they, it's like their article is, let's go out and find 10 points that I found other places and post them. Well, data is its own thing and it will continue to be more important. VP of sales, VP of marketing, VP of data. It will become its own thing in organizations that are cutting edge. Gather your data as you need it. Uh, the, the current sales environment favors good sales reps. Peter, what are you seeing on, on your LinkedIn invites these days? Tell, you tell me for a second. What are you oh. seeing coming in? It's, it's, it's generic. It's BS. It's just, uh, please connect with me here on LinkedIn. Why? Why should I connect I want, with you? I don't know who the hell you are. Why should I connect with you? I right? want 45 minutes of your time. Like, <laughs> and, 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 and an email. So there, I, I've got some simple. And th this is the, the marketing and sales strategy as it relates to data is also what I'm doing for my clients. Having, having really, you know, having been a CEO, having been the, the, in essence, the chief technology officer, the top sales rep, the marketing guy, uh, as the company grew from you know one to eighty, uh, when everything was all combined, the the the, the challenges at each stage are, are different. the The first thing is customize. Like I got a CEO the other day just by finding out that he went to UW Madison, and I meant I mentioned uh, and I don't can't remember the 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 what is the Madison mascot I don't even remember now but I mentioned it in the email when was the last time you've been to Camp Randall to see to see the Madison whatever they are and, and it's like a, a minute of research before you reach out can immediately differentiate from from other people so what if your data strategy had hey let's get the mascot and by the way I do this as a, as a, as one of my services let's get the mascot and the location of the of the of the of the school for each contact and if it's one of the big schools that are known for sports you know university of miami michigan whatever and you mention something when was the last time you've been to to see the you immediately separate yourself into the 1% what else can you do so data done smart is now about gathering those points to differentiate yourself when you do an outreach. You can still do a quasi-mass outreach, but if you're just sending generic templates, you're going to get responses like I said. Hey, Donato, I, I, I sell to companies like you all the time. And like, really? I, 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 I do this at night on my phone, and my wife's like, why are you giggling? We're watching TV. Why are you giggling? It's like, really? Which ones? <laughs> Uh, it's, I, it's, <laughs> yeah, the a new one that's going around to accountants and some some horrible trainer out there making money off people who's a LinkedIn expert is telling people send. I noticed your computer science background interests me. 
and <laughs> so so we should or or uh, LinkedIn recommended we connect. Yeah, you and eight hundred. So I I I put I do snarky responses. You know which which company like mine. You really you really b- love my accomplishments. Wow, which one? And they never respond, or maybe they get the hint that okay. And then I have a standard template that I post in. Why why your outreach sucks? <laughs> I have a I, I have you know, you remember that that article I wrote years ago that took off uh, uh, 10, 10, uh, 10 ways to sell to me or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it got picked up by the business journal, but I think I need to do this for for LinkedIn. <laughs> My dog doesn't like it. Uh, you know, why your LinkedIn outreach sucks, and just paste it, paste the blog link in the responses because it's it's bad. I have tremendous luck on LinkedIn. I reach out to four to five people a day. I customize it. I show them that I spent the time right. to learn who they are, and right. I get responses. Yeah, I get really good response. You know, one of the things I do is, you know, I I, I edit podcasts for clients. And oftentimes there will be somebody who is really interesting to me. And so I will go on LinkedIn and say, hey, I just edited your podcast with Jessica Miller Merrill um, uh, for the Workology podcast. And that inspired me to connect with you here on LinkedIn. And it's 100 percent, you know, when when I put something like that out there. Right. Absolutely. Because it's personal. It's not just some generic garbage. So here, here's an app that I've been, if I get extra time, I'm going to build it. You know, I've got an army of developers at my disposal. Uh, I, I very much have used the freelance systems out there and have built a tremendous set of uh, people that I can reach out to for pretty much anything. Uh, so I've got like, a couple of core people. Back up for a second. Like what, yeah. what freelance... Uh, um, freelancer, Upwork, uh, Flex Jobs. There, there's many of them out there. Uh, Guru is a new one. So, you know, you, on, on you one of them, really I had success ha- from using those. Well, <laughs> here I'll, I'll give my I'll give my secret away. Okay. Uh, with with the noise that, and I I think it's not like a competitive advantage. I think that if we train the workers to Follow the same, just like a LinkedIn invite, train the, work, train the workers. Uh, you put a project out. And in my project, I said, uh, in my posting, I'll write, to prove that you read this fully and have attention to detail, as the first word in your bid, put your favorite pizza topping. So it's challenge response. Same thing on LinkedIn. If you're not a bot, re- reply with your favorite color. People are using these bots. I screen them out. So I believe there's a market opportunity right now in the social space for challenge response utilities. So you get a message on LinkedIn. Your bot says, reply with your favorite color so I know you're not a bot. Now, you can make this uh, more complex, your favorite pizza topping, because obviously just like a CAPTCHA, it can be, but it's not worth it. It's probably not worth the engineering to, to uh, try to defeat a challenge response for LinkedIn invites. Uh, so challenge response for LinkedIn invites, challenge response for anybody that vies for any second of your time. I do challenge response. So 99% of people I ignore because they're trying outreach dot this and, and, and sales something dot that. It doesn't work. It's spraying and praying. So I don't know, maybe I'll give this away to just shut down that whole industry of, of har- horrid process. <laughs> they just love me for that, wouldn't they? Yeah. Yeah, they would. Uh, I would love it, you know, if you did that for sure. I want to go back to lists for a second, because again, like I mentioned, now that there are no trade shows, how are you going to reach out to prospects and get their attention without putting out, you know, the kind of garbage that you normally see. So is direct mail still a viable option? You know, like a postcard? Is Does that work? Everything, everything needs to be analyzed. 
you know, one of my, uh, my consulting clients uh, that does a tremendous job, uh, they're called Demand Frontier. And basically, I'm, I'm on call uh, as, as the on-site expert uh, in, in data. And they're doing some really cool things. For example, uh, you know, I'm, I'm generating the data and we'll make sure we have many data points, not just, not just an email. An email, a mailing address, we'll, 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 the, we'll call, verify. Now, they're doing all the creative as well, the marketing campaigns. And, and so I'm, I'm focused on the data side, but they're doing some really cool things like, hey, let's make sure we've got a really targeted prospect and let's send them an apple pie in order to take a meeting, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that, that type of high touch, knowing the value per prospect has a huge impact. So you can't, you know, don't send 50,000, send 300, but personalize, find out the details, email, social, and mail, verify phone beforehand, talk to, the, talk to a secretary. I'd like to send your boss an apple pie to, to get him. To, and they're not going to say no, right? Every, every, every admin wants, wants their boss to have an apple pie, right? <laughs> so so for, for, for large organizations, uh, firms like Demand Frontier that can do this uh, are a good partner on the data side. So list the list enough. The list is not enough without the plan. Right. Yeah. Well, th this sort of comes back to what you were talking about earlier. Um, the ten laws of list generation that you mentioned, and um, our viewers and listeners can go to your website, which is dataz.co, and uh, right the, on the home the website. Page. The website's currently parked, but we'll we'll. Maybe maybe those are I don't know if if you maybe the blog section is open. That, okay, yeah, yeah the the, yeah. the home page was 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 temporarily parked as I'm I'm revamping with all my new products. So uh, I'm one guy with yeah, a bunch of contracts. I I, you and me both, you know. But so th this was a really interesting um, PowerPoint presentation that you have up on your website. The you know, and the first thing is the law of planning, yep. you know, and so. I'd like you to, and, and you, you began to talk about it until I think I interrupted you about something else, but, you know, to, to follow up on that thought and, um, you know, talk about how you prepare to do a successful list generation and mailing or emailing, you know, I, I mean, I get so many goddamn emails that especially, you know, in the last two months of the political season, oh, yeah. the number of urgent emails I have received, you know, they, they, they're like hundreds a day. It's ridiculous. So, you know, I'm just going delete, 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 you know? So how do you get people to open an email? You don't just send an email. You make it, you make it expected. What if you took the time to leave a voicemail, you know, I, I taught a class in the past. Did a web, did what many webinars on the science of voicemail or voice voicemail is a science. So you can you can leave a crappy message. You can you can leave a crappy email, but if, if you're if you can get above crappy, and you could do something, I'm going to be sending I'm going to be sending you an email. I, I took the time to learn a little about your position. Don't be so bold that you make it sound like you know everything. But I took a little time to learn about your position. It seems like this. I believe it could be potential. If not now, let's connect on LinkedIn. So so it, it's it may be potential later. Timing is huge. So many people get discouraged right now. And I tell you, selling to me is tough right now because I'm not buying a lot. Right. But right. I get I get messages all the time like that's really interesting. Give me a 90 day follow up call. And then they don't. Like I'm saying, I'm interested. Give me a 90 day follow up call. And they don't I'm like really, really. Uh, it may be churn. So 
Yeah, I would I would imagine, especially in these call center jobs, there's just a tremendous amount of churn. Yeah, this was this is enterprise software, so uh, yeah, so I, I'm getting a lot of these. Like, yeah, hey, I'm interested. Call me in three months. Call me in four months. Uh, and it's almost like it's like you shot it's like you shot their puppy when you tell them <laughs> it's not a good time for me now. Right. And, and, you, and you, I mean, you know, the sales reps can't be thin skinned, especially now. That's you, you've true. got to take it. What? Think about it. Think about what re-upped our connection, Peter, several months ago. Remember back in, was it February? Something like that. Yeah. April? March, yeah. April. So, yeah. Yeah. So I, I was, I remember I called you. Were, you, you were walking around, getting yep. your 10,000 steps in and you called I me was. out of the blue. And I was so impressed with that because and, I, and it, at that time I was like, what the hell am I going to do? There are no conferences this year. And that's how I made all my money was going to these events and shooting videos at these events, right? For either the, the, you know, the event producers or for exhibitors or sponsors. That's, that was my MO. And that MO no longer <laughs> exists. So I become a Zoom wizard. <laughs> Zoom, Zoom wizard. That's, you need to get a patch. Yeah, Zoom wizard. A Zoom wizard, wizard patch. Yeah. But I yeah, mean, that's I mean, basically all of my business right now and uh, all the videos I'm producing are, are being produced via Zoom. Wow. You like Zoom better than, better than Skype working better for you? Uh, you know, I liked Skype up until Microsoft bought them and fucked it up. <laughs> Do, are you going to bleep that? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, back, back when I called you, I was, I was, I, I was doing well and feeling guilty about it, right? That, you know, I am a remote operation. My products just started coming out right when COVID hit, uh, and people needed what I had. They, they, they still do even more so. So I'm like, okay, what can I do? to just do something good and not go crazy too. Cause I'm stuck. Right. I'm stuck at home anyway, back to it. So I, I decided just like, Hey, who are the people that I want to talk to? And it turned out that I had some like 60,000 people in my email and past contacts and different systems and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, but they never made it to my phone. And I had about 1500 people in my phone that I've had good relationships with uh, that for one, for one reason or another, aside from family, they made it into my contact list on my actual phone. I called those people. I started the A's. I went right down and I, and I contacted everybody. So I had some great conversations with like, uh, uh, well, I, I had one fun one. I had always fun. Uh, Bill Kubitschek from, from PC Recruiter, right? right. He, was, he was in Hawaii at the time and we were just chatting. I'm like, no, Bill, I'm not, not calling to sell you. Uh, uh, but just touch and base. And, and I had, and I had so many great conversations. I connected two people, with two jobs. So that I was just calling and it was, uh, I'm calling just to see what's going on. Uh, not, uh, I'm always selling something, but I wasn't in this case. And I just want to touch base, see what's going on. Can I help in any way? And, and sometimes it was hour long calls. If I could give advice or help, I, I did. If I made connections, I could. And it was one of the best Four weeks on the phone I've ever had. It took four weeks of walking six days a week to pretty much reach out to the entire list. I didn't connect with everybody, but some, some, some are scheduled for, for, for callbacks. But that's what sales need to do. Uh, that, which, that's what sales needed to do back in April is start making calls that are not pushy, taking, take, getting connection, finding out what's going on, make connections if you can help. And as things start to, I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting pummeled now. And it was all from that series of touching base calls back in April-ish. I'll tell you, it, it, it inspired me because I decided that, wow, this is such a great idea and I am really down in the dumps. I'm going to start calling somebody every day, somebody that, that I care about that I haven't seen in a while, because I haven't seen anybody in a while, let's face it, um, and just doing basically what you did, just touching base. Hey, how you doing? What's going on? Can I help in any way? Uh, let's stay in touch. 
kind of thing. And so I've been doing that and it really helped bring my, you know, my mood back up and mm -hmm. make me feel better and more positive. And, um, you know, and, and again, the people who I reached out to were appreciative of the call. Yes. Yeah. So, so I, th I thought that was a really great idea. What has inspired you over the last six or eight months in this shit show we've all been living through? My number one driver is when I build something and get to show it. I, I'm, I admit I'm a show off. I'm like a kid in the candy store. But the reaction I'm looking for is when I went to the trade show and I first got this back in the brawl and you know, before Brawlock, I ran a recruiting firm, as you know. Uh, and back in the Brawlock days, I create something, someone come up, give me a high five at a trade show, and like you changed my life. I used to do things so like this, and now I do it this way. So everything I'm doing is a combination of process and technology. So uh up until about three months ago, I had built myself a job. I built enough technology and process that I could take jobs, do a consulting job, consulting engagement, and uh, get paid. I'm now in that transition phase, which is exciting. And I think this is the underlying driver now is that I'm moving from having built myself a job to having built a company. And what that means is I can start hiring people to use what I built to take over and do what I did and hopefully better. So that's exciting because uh, I'm taking a different approach this time. It's not going to be the 80 hour weeks. Uh, I spent more time up front making sure that I've got undeniable value proposition that I can go in and uh, I don't have to sell on price. I don't have to discount. I, I have something that will immediately bring value and help make my clients money. That's awesome. And how can, uh, how can our viewers and listeners connect with you, Donato? Uh, just via, via LinkedIn. Just don't send me a, <laughs> if you send a connect request and don't say anything, I delete it. So Soyan, Soyan told a picture with Peter, love to connect. Like you said, have a need, uh, want to sell you something. If they want to sell me something, tell me what and why. <laughs> Give me a reason. There you so go. So good communication, good communication, good outreach. But yeah, LinkedIn, I'm easy to find. You are very easy to find. Well, again, thanks so much for taking time to speak with me. Hey, it's Peter Clayton. Please hang on for just a minute. Like most of you, my business was completely upended by COVID-19. Instead of filming marketing, sales, testimonial, and product demo videos at conferences and corporate offices, I'm living on Zoom. Zoom can be an effective video tool for many kinds of powerful content. As people have become more comfortable being on camera and Upgrading their video streaming capabilities, we are now able to create high-quality, entertaining, and informative videos using the Zoom platform. Virtual meetings, customer testimonials, product demos, marketing pitches. You'll be amazed at the video quality and the amount of sophistication and graphic complexity we're able to create. For a free consultation on how you can use video to market and promote your business, send me an email. Peter at totalpicture.com and check out totalpicture.com forward slash work. I look forward to hearing from you and thanks for tuning in.